Hey, this is Ed with AtticFoil.com, and this is FAQ Friday, where I answer some of those common questions about radiant barrier, insulation, and other general questions about how to make your home, business, or building more comfortable and energy efficient. Today, I'm going to answer some of the most common questions we get about installing radiant barrier using the staple up method. One question we get is, what about the gaps at the top and the bottom? Is it okay if the foil touches the attic insulation? What if I want to add more attic insulation later? And what if I don't have a ridge vent? The first thing I always tell people is to don't overthink it. All you're really trying to do is get a piece of foil between the hot roof and the cool insulation. Once you do that, that foil is going to reflect the heat back and keep that insulation cooler. So there's two main things to remember. First, you want air to flow freely through the attic as though the foil's not even there. You want air to be able to come in the bottom of the attic, flow through the attic or between the foil and the roof deck, and then out of the attic. Secondly, you want to cover as much area as possible. The more coverage, the better. Think about a tree. If I put a tree over half of your house, it would be better than none of your house. So radiant barrier is the thing, same thing. The more coverage, the better. It has a cumulative effect. So let's talk about gaps at the bottom. When you run the foil down to the bottom, you want to leave about a two to four inch gap is plenty for the air to come into the attic. Now what's going to happen is the air is going to come through the soffit vent and it's going to start to rise up. Then basically it's going to have a choice of either going between the foil and the roof deck or to be drawn into the attic. You just want to have a small gap down there so the attic for the, for the air to be drawn into the attic. If the foil touches the insulation in some areas, it's fine. You just don't want the foil completely blocking that air path. Now, as far as adding more insulation later, what you want to do is you're going to run a piece of foil horizontal across the bottom of the attic. You don't need baffles for this. They're a waste of time, money, and effort. The easiest way to do this is to run a piece of foil horizontal across the bottom. This will act just like an insulation baffle. Here's an example of the foil put in and kind of tucked in at the bottom. This gives you a little pocket <clears throat> for the attic insulation to sit on the top plate of the wall. This basically what does just what an insulation baffle will do. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to run a piece of foil horizontal above the first piece. So this is going to leave about a two or four inch gap and this will allow a space for the air. Now what's going to happen just like the gap at the bottom, the air can come in the bottom when it hits this slit, basically it can continue on between the foil and the roof deck or it can be drawn into the attic. What about the gaps at the top? You want to run the foil all the way up to the top of the attic and stop the foil a few inches from the ridge board. And you want to do that whether or not you have ridge vent. If you've got any other type of exhaust vents, for example, wind turbines, turtle vents, uh, air hawks, um, or even a gable vent, you want to cut a hole in the foil directly below any hole that's in the roof. So the hot air basically is going to pool in the top of the attic. Here's an example of cutting around some exhaust vents. Now, the customer left a little bit uh, larger space than needed, but it looks like one piece ended here, and then the next piece started uh, just above the vents. That's fine. Remember, hot air is going to pool in the top of the attic, and it's going to find its way out. It's kind of like water heading toward a drain. You just want to give it a path to find its way up and out. Now, here's an example of a hip-style roof. In a hip-style roof, the air basically will hit a dead end where the rafters hit the rafter, uh, rafter beam. So what you need to do is just cut a little hole or a slit in each rafter bay, and that hot air will continue up to the top of the attic to find its way out. Now, here's the final question. What about this? Should you add, add another piece up here? You know, if you stop 5 or 10 inches uh, from the top of the ridge beam, you're probably fine. If you stop 3 or 4 or 5 feet, then it may be worth coming in and doing an extra uh, strip at the top. But remember, radiant barrier has a cumulative effect. So you've got to decide, is it worth your, worth your time and effort to get that small amount of extra coverage? I hope this video helped answer some of your questions today. And if you have any questions, visit the website, atticfoil.com, or give us a call with your questions, and we'll be glad to help you.